So about five months ago, there was a clip going viral of this podcast that had this one particular guest that we'll just call her interesting. And overnight, this person became a viral sensation because of how absurd the things she was saying on the podcast were. You see, she was on a podcast that talks about dating and relationships, and one thing this podcast often asks their guests is to rate themselves on a scale of 1 to 10, with there sometimes being people on the guest with crazy high standards and false self-perceptions. And when it got to this person's turn to speak, she not not only called herself a 10 out of 10, but considered herself to be a certified baddie. This instantly spawned into viral clips, memes, tweets, etc. The whole thing. Eventually, the internet decided to give this person the name Gorlock the Destroyer. Now, since this podcast that blew her up, Gorlock the Destroyer has been doing all sorts of different collaborations, podcasts, etc. From streaming with Aiden Ross to doing other insane podcasts, the Gorlock the Destroyer story is one that I find to be very interesting and funny. And after I recently saw her in person at the airport by complete accident, I figured honestly, I'm going to compile all of the videos I've done on Gorlock the Destroyer into one almost movie-like production. So I hope you guys enjoy and leave a like. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy. Hi, I'm Kiko. I'm 23. Uh, I go to UCSB and I also bartend. Now listen, obviously bro was done horrendous with that clip, there's no mistaking it, but let's keep it a buck. She put herself in the position in the first place to be done that horrendous, if that makes sense. The four other girls on that table cannot be done that horrendous, if you know what I'm saying. So listen, okay, that clip, funny meme and whatever, but if you actually find the podcast that that clip is taken from, the minutes that surround that clip are actually pretty entertaining in itself, so I figured we'd take a look at it today. This individual here has some of the most wild takes I've heard in my entire life and you're gonna have to hear them too but before we get into that please be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're not yet subscribed and buy my plushie links are in the description let's get into it please tell us your name age and occupation go ahead hi I'm Kiko I'm 23 uh, I go to UCSB and I also bartend I'm Ali, better known for Al Weezy. I'm 23 years old from Arizona and I'm your certified bad bitch you're, huh? The certified baddie. Talking to the mic. Yeah, talking to the mic, just so they can uh, hear you. Say, um, your, say your occupation one more time for just, us. Just so they can. <laughs> Yo, this guy, dude. Say that one more time. I mean, in fairness, I'd probably be cracking up too. It's objectively hilarious to hear that from somebody like this. Dude, this is literally the character that destroys me in Overwatch. This gotta be a crazy POV to live through though. My occupation is a certified bad bitch. This, <laughs> bro, this cannot be real life. You get invited to this podcast as a lol cow, and then for your occupation, they ask you, hey, what do you do for a living? And you say, I'm a certified bad bitch. When did you get certified? Who certified you? I'd love to know. Bro, do you even have a certificate like you definitely don't if you do it's forgery also how long ago were you certified because if your certification hasn't been renewed yet there could be some problems there that may be a false claim and since jane from breaking bad isn't even certified i'm pretty sure the transitive property concludes that you definitely are not what was very your much, age what was your age again very much baddie vibes i'm 23 years old 20, okay and kiko 23 right yeah okay 23 23 and certified bad bad bitch or boss ba I very much baddie vibes baddie, like full time what? baddie <laughs> no breaks <laughs> I feel like you shouldn't be allowed to claim the label of certified bad bitch when this single Clash Royale card could end your entire career. I put this down and three seconds later, you're just drops of elixir. Also, that dude literally gave you an out. He was like, wait, did you mean certified boss bitch? Because that's kind of actually like popular now. Boss bitch, girl boss, you know, you could actually kind of work with that. But instead you're like, no, I'm, I'm just a bad bitch, which is obviously f***ing false. What, so it's very much full time. What does that What does that mean? Can you explain that? <laughs> it's just a lifestyle. Like it's. I mean, if you get it, you get it. The rules are there. I mean, I feel like every girl. I feel like there was originally six people invited to the podcast, but this person just vortexed one of them. And every woman can be a certified baddie. It's just the mindset, and it's a full time job. But if you had, if if there was a def, if there was a dictionary, and you were hired by Webster's to define mm. certified bad bitch, is that what it is? Is? Yes. How? What, what would be the dictionary definition of a certified bad bitch? I would have to say, I mean, if just like toning it down completely, just a woman who's confident in herself, 
does whatever she wants for herself, nobody else, just women, whatever, men, whatever, anybody can be a certified bad bitch. Is it's that just, the, it's is, just, I think it's just the level of confidence and it's the mindset for sure. Yeah. You want to know what that mindset is? Delusion. It's delusion. Okay. Doing whatever you want, whenever you want, thinking the world is going to bend over backwards for you at all times is delusion and it's narcissism. Yeah. You know, I cut the elderly in line at the grocery store because uh, obviously certified bad bitch over here. Okay. I mean, come on, come on. Right. Oh yeah. I do twerk at funerals. I mean, obviously that's just a bad bitch energy. I'm certified. Obviously, you know, it's about confidence, body positivity and if you don't like me when i do stuff like that it's because you don't have the mindset like as i'm getting older because i'm still 23 i just feel like i'm i'm about to turn 24 but i feel like in the last year or so bro i am not tripping there was a girl sitting in that empty seat what did you do did you just kirby somebody while the podcast was going like that's insane to me like my style is like ever so changing when it comes to confidence Mainly because, like, compared to when I was, like, 21 or 22. Chase, why are you laughing? <laughs> Chase, why are you laughing? Did you read the room? Well, Nothing. Sorry, he's laughing. Please I'm, continue. He's please laughing continue. at the chat. <laughs> Fucking Chase, 21, please, 22. Please continue. Yeah. How dare you, Chase? Please continue, as you were saying. The amount of times that I've had that exact same situation happen where it's like your boy's cracking you up at a time where it's just not appropriate. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. You're just in class trying to focus, teachers talking about something serious, and your boy's just texting you memes. Especially in history class, God forbid your teacher's talking about slavery and you're like lamowing. Can I specifically ask this to you? We totally don't have to speak about it if you're uncomfortable, but what age did you start identifying as a woman? Can I be honest? I have always known. Like, I never knew the word for it, if I'm being honest. Like, growing up, I didn't know what trans was. She's trans, morbidly obese, and transgender? Dude, you can get into any college in the country. That's so dope because instead of having to do SAT prep, you can just go out and get a hibachi dinner. And that will suffice. I mean, that's probably going to help you get into college more than doing any sort of SAT prep. I didn't know those things. So like anything that grasped onto femininity, that was me. You know, like anything, I put a towel over my head, that was my hair. Like I would, literally my mom and my parents, like when they would have their night outings and our babysitters would come over, I'd steal my mom's heels. Like femininity for me is something that's always been 100% natural and not forced. I mean, it actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it. When you're eating as much as she was eating, I mean, you're, you're absorbing more estrogen than the average person, so it's not really a shock or a surprise that you sort of come out looking like this. She probably had a few Mr. Beast burgers, if you know what I'm saying. Ask everyone to rate themselves on the scale of 1 to 10, so let's do that. 10. Um, Kiko, so, okay, we'll start with you. Go ahead. 10. A fat fucking 10. A fat... A fat 10. Well, one of those is right. Oh, okay, maybe she's saying she's a 10 out of 10 out of the morbidly obese community. But uh, is that even true? A fat fucking 10? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying what everybody in the comments is going to say. And be like, oh yeah, she's a fat fucking 10. <laughs> like, hey. Is there a comma somewhere in in that statement? Ruthless. Just just ruthless, bro. It's like I just come here to chill out, watch a podcast, some funny highlights. Oh, large person saying she's uh, really hot. LOL. But then the host is like, dude, you meant to put a comma in that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Hot educate me where you came from. That's if you know, if you know tell me. Just tell me. Th well, just think about, tell it, me. think about it intuitively. If a 10 is like a perfect woman, like absolutely maxed out attractiveness. 10 is supposed to be on physical. It's supposed to be on physical attraction so if we're only talking, we're not if supposed we're to talk about personality attraction, yeah yes. if we're talking just physical attraction 10 is like the most attractive woman you could possibly imagine yes it's 10 like out of 10 anything. for a reason because you're lining up 10 and you're counting how many points are you getting that's why what, it's, what do you mean you're lining up 10 where like does lining up 10 you're women come into this no i'm saying 10 men like we're all dude oh my god i'm losing brain cells right now every time this conversation gets brought up on the podcast because they do this every episode whenever they have girls on the show they ask the girls to rate themselves on a scale of one to ten which i don't know i think that's kind of vain but at the end of the day it's like you know you choose to go on that podcast you know what it's about 
and then you just just get it over with. But bro, these people always make it so much deeper than it is. Like, what do you mean on a scale of 1 to 10? What scale are we using? American beauty standards, physical attractiveness, scale of 1 to 10. Really not that hard. Like, if you have this person saying that she's a fat 10, then you sort of know that it's not a very serious conversation. <laughs> okay, dude, so you remember this certified baddie, right? You know, the girl on that podcast who not only said that she was a certified baddie, but that she was a 10 out of 10. Scale of 1 to 10. 10, so let's do that. 10. Um, Kiko, so, okay, we'll start with you. Go ahead. 10. A fat fucking 10. You look like an Elden Ring boss. Now, I had a couple questions, I'm just gonna be honest. When she was like, I'm a certified baddie, I was like, well, sister, who certified you? They clearly didn't do a good enough job on the inspection. Now, since that video, this person's continued their conquest on taking over the internet, including an unexpected collaboration with Sneeko and Aiden Ross, where she literally got cyberbullied for like five minutes straight. Have you ever Right. Now, after this went down, a few other things happened, which I think were really unfortunate for this person's career. And guys, this news is honestly kind of heartbreaking, so just bear with me here. Try to stay calm. This generation's certified baddie was rejected at a nightclub. I'm literally leaving the club early because men are fucking shit. I'm in the fucking drive through of the Jack in a Box on my way home and to go fucking eat my feelings. Like, what the fuck? You see, the problem with this is I know exactly why this happened. It's something called toxic positivity. This person's friends and anybody who talks to this person are so afraid to say anything negative about their lifestyle because they don't want to seem mean or, like, disapproving that the very visible issues with this person never get addressed, like the fact that they're not a 10 and they think they are. So when everybody is being super nice to you and is afraid to actually say anything that might give a dose of reality into your life, you start believing that you are a 10 out of 10, the most attractive person on the planet. And believing this, you know, totally distorts your expectations of what should happen while you're interacting with people. Like if you believe you're a 10 out of 10, the most beautiful person ever, you obviously aren't going to suspect that you'll get rejected. So inevitably when you do get rejected, you have a mental breakdown and record it while you're in a drive through at Jack in the Box. Like, I'm so sick of this notion that being nice is the healthiest way to interact with people, especially if there's like an actual problem that needs to be addressed. I would rather be mean and helpful than nice and useless. Like, if you have a fat friend, you can either be nice to him and not ever, you know, encourage him to improve his life, or you can be a little bit mean, but with the right intent to actually improve his life and suggest that he should work out. I think it's totally okay to sacrifice being nice at the altar of honesty. Listen, you can call me a dude, tell me my chromosomes are XY, and tell me that my DNA will always be male, but guess what? At the end of the day, I'm still hot, though. I mean, that TikTok was pure cope, but if you have to do that to get it out of your system, then go for it. But let's actually try to think of some long-term solutions here. You can't just cope post all your problems away. But listen, if you'd rather not address your problems and eat jack-in-the-box whenever you get sad, go for it. But you have to be okay with being put into the Sigma edits with a funk song playing that says, Reject modernity, embrace tradition. Because if you don't want to improve your life, you know, at least let somebody look at your life and decide to improve their own. Babe. Your man is probably in my fucking DMs and I could have had him as a body literally last week if I wanted to. Yes, it's a <laughs> Dude, you can call these Sigma edits cringy, but at the end of the day, they work. I feel like people who actually watch them have a better workout afterward. It's like thirst traps for girls. Thirst traps when girls post them, I think that's cringy, but at the end of the day, it still works. Guys hit them up, they slide into their DMs, they purchase their OF. So again, if it works, even if it's cringy, hey man, as long as it gets the job done. Let's spill the tea real quick, okay? <laughs> like, let's spill the tea. My experiences from dating are way more different than theirs. I mean, like, the sky is blue. Obviously, your experience dating is gonna be different than a normal person's. You gotta love how it's prefaced, like, oh, I'm gonna spill the tea, okay? I'm gonna expose myself, and then it's like, I have a weird time dating. Wow. Wow, dude. Crazy. Literally zero amount of tea was spilled. The tea is in the teapot. None of it got spilled at all. Matter of fact, the tea is actually getting cold as we speak. I'm a trans girl, like... Men, honestly, like, 
it's so fucking rare that you ever even find a guy that's being like, let me take you out. Let's go see a movie. Let's go have dinner. No, they're just trying to fuck. They I'm a fetish. Want- I'm a fetish to like 98% of those fucking guys. So Sorry. like if I'm attracted to them sexually, like there's, I've... 90, like 95% of the time, I'll get it. I'm sorry. What? 95% of the time that you want to do it with a guy, you get to. No. The only 95% I see is body fat. No, hate, but like, honestly, how could you expect anyone to believe that if you approach 100 guys, out of that 100, 95 of them are going to do it with you? You can't even get 95 out of 100 guys to like, eat spinach or some shit. Like, how would you even expect what you're saying to be in the realm of like, the cosmos of human possibility of believing? You said a roster, so like, what question for you, what's the most amount of people that you've dated all at once? All at once. Like in rotation? Sh- same time, rotation, however um, you want to. Honestly, like three. In oh, rotation. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, like I'll have men. I'm like, okay, this one's annoying me. Like, okay, it's time to clear his ass and let's bench this person. Dude, if you're getting benched by the certified baddie, you might actually have to be placed on suicide watch. Like the government has to step in and say, this man, he just got benched by a quote certified baddie. We got to have the entire SWAT team looking after this man's life because he's a danger to himself. No, at my job. I had an experience with an old coworker. I'm not gonna say my my what I what my real say his is. full name. No, no. <laughs> what's his social, I'm social security? I'm not gonna say his name. But I I got offended because long story short, he basically said that if he went on like a a date with a trans girl, and he didn't know that she was trans, and she is like a baddie. Like I'm talking ass, titties, like operator. You can not even fucking tell. Like this is the baddest bitch. And he found out that she ass. was trans. He said that he would feel the need to bring out his in. Oh, okay. Obviously, that's insane. Like you can't physically threaten a person because they don't tell you they're trans before going into an interaction with them. Violence is never the answer, and immediately when you turn to violence, you're in the wrong. But I also do agree with what the certified baddie is saying that you you can't not tell someone you're trans before you're gonna do it with them. Because if you consent but you don't know they're trans, it's like that's like fake consent. That's a very important thing, like age. Like you know, if I'm with someone and they say, "Oh, I'm 19," I'm like, "Okay, that's cool." But then it turns out they're like you know 17 it's like okay that's not cool now obviously i wouldn't get violent but you got to communicate there man that's important and i get it some girls like i kind of come to a pride thing too with trans girls it's like well i worked so hard to get to my womanhood and blah 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 blah. i get that and i fully respect it like whatever you want to be still but when it comes to a man and especially in dating and this like i said this is my opinion and, and like if any other like trans in, girls are watching mic, the, or if any other mic. trans girls are watching any of the dolls are watching hit my dms because and if i'm saying something that's misinforming <laughs> educate me because i'm totally open to that but i feel like when you're one of the dolls you have to disclose when it comes to dating because this is how there's things like violence you know x y and z this is how trans girls like end up in sticky situations nine times out of ten i mean you know you probably shouldn't ask this person for workout advice or dieting advice but to be fair if you need advice on how to deal with dating as a transgender person if you're a transgender person maybe you could ask this person for advice so in that sense i guess you know they are they are probably an expert ever thought about doing only fans or no can I be honest? Dear God! Everybody get down! Brace for impact! Now she in a mag and they asking the questions about her fun facts and her past with her exes. So the two videos that I've made on the certified baddie, aka Gorlock, have done well, both breaking 100,000 views. Now, whenever I have a video that breaks 100,000 views, I try to milk it if I can. Don't hate the player, hate the game. If you want to lag on the bag, that's your prerogative, but I'm not gonna do that. The problem with milking this topic is that there's there's just nothing much to talk about really. Besides the podcast that made her famous with the whole Gorlock meme, there's really not much else she's done. So my philosophy is that when there's no content to harvest, you gotta plant the seeds yourself. So my thought was that even though she's a viral meme, she's not really that popular on social media by sheer follower count, I'm gonna DM her and ask for an interview. Now I thought the odds that I would get a response would be pretty decent because she's done podcasts with people who have 285 subscribers. So I 
I can pay more money than them, and I'll get you more exposure than them. You know, a bigger platform for you to spread your message. So I open with, hey, would you be down for an interview? Now, I'm not clueless. I know that she has a packed schedule. It's not easy balancing making TikToks with putting all-you-can-eat buffets out of business and doing it all in fashion, of course. But realistically, the odds of me getting a response from just a DM were not good enough for me. You're not gonna win the lottery with one ticket. So I asked you guys, the Achitards, to assist in my conquest. So I posted on my Instagram story to everyone DM. I'm trying to set up an interview. Pretty clear call to action. I really needed you guys to flood her DMs, okay? You don't hang up the phone until, until the, the client, client either buys or fucking dies! Now, just for the little cherry on top, in order to seal the deal, I just put up another post saying, at Alweezy DM. And what do you know, it was arms day. Now, unfortunately, for a few days, I did not get a response. It was tough, you know, dealing with rejection isn't easy. I was coping pretty hard, and to be honest, guys, I spiraled down a pretty dark path for a bit. I lost the plot for a little bit, and I kind of got back into some old bad habits. But then I realized, if I don't keep my chin up, my crown's gonna fall. So by now, I'm thinking, she probably has seen all of the DMs from my fans and has decided to ignore them. Maybe she even knows who I am and has given me the silent treatment. So I'm realizing that if I don't sweeten the deal for her, it's not gonna happen. I have to be bold. I have to put up a price right now. So honestly, I'm like, go big or go home. You know, something she clearly understands. I said, at Al Weezy, I will PayPal you $5,000 for an interview. Now, was I actually going to PayPal her $5,000 for an interview? Hell Hell no, to the no, no, no. Are you joking? Are you out of your mind? What, do you just think I'm swimming in money? Maybe when I hit a million subs, that's a more realistic number, but for now, oh, no, no, no. Dude, if we're gonna be straight up, I was not planning on paying her at all. I just wanted to put up some big flashy number to maybe get her attention. Because think about it like this, if she sees the 5K and responds to me, I could get on the phone with her to discuss a price, and while I'm on the phone with her, I sneak in like one, two, or three interview questions and record her answers, so we call that one hitting a lick. But no, I actually do feel bad for anybody who believed I was seriously offering $5,000. That's going to charity before it's going to the Fast Food Foundation. Al Weezy does not live very Christ-like. I'm not funding that lifestyle, G. But I look into it further to see how much 5k would have been relative to what she charges for other stuff. Now, I couldn't get an exact figure for what she would charge to go on a podcast because, you know, that stuff's kind of hard to find. But the link in her Instagram bio is to a cameo, which is just this website where you pay someone like five dollars and they record a video of them saying something that you request. And her price for the cameo video was thirty-five dollars. So you can see it's thirty-five dollars for around a thirty-second video. So thirty-five times two is seventy. So seventy dollars for a minute. So if we're using the cameo numbers, it should cost me about fourteen hundred dollars to interview her for twenty minutes. I offered less than five times that. Now I also saw that you can message her for three. And I'm pretty sure the incentive is that she's like guaranteed to respond if you message her on here opposed to Instagram. Now you can call me a cheapskate, but I really didn't feel like putting $3 into a message asking, hey, would you want to go on an interview for my channel? And then just getting a no. Because even though you're the one paying $3 to message her, it's like she doesn't have to be nice to you. And then at that point, if I put in the $3, the sunken cost fallacy tells me that I'm going to have to put in much more because I'm going to want my desired outcome. And I know there's somebody saying it Cheeto, is that really where you draw the line? $3 for potential content? For Gorlock? Absolutely. That $3 is going right from my pocket straight to the cashier taking her order at Jack in the Box. My plan was to get an interview for $0. Obviously, that's unrealistic, but what can I say? I'm a businessman. At the end of the day, though, I can literally tell you the story about how I tried to get an interview with her, and that story itself is content. Dude, I love my job so much. <laughs> Ever thought about doing an OnlyFans or no? Can I be honest? Yeah. I was actually thinking about dropping one on my birthday. I think the fact that she didn't drop an OnlyFans is the single reason that there isn't a World War III right now. Uh yeah, I don't, I still, honestly, like, the only reason why I didn't was because I just had a lot going on. Like I said, I just have, I'm working on a lot of stuff right yeah. now. Um, but I just didn't have the time to get around to do it, but... 
you never know maybe something will pop up in the future but i think if i were to drop one my content wouldn't be anything like crazy maybe i'll like flash a nipple here and there i mean i do it all the time at the club anyways uh go to jail you couldn't waterboard that information out of me are you joking any form of esoteric torture method that they use in like global combat could be used against me and you would not be able to get me to confess that i'm flashing nipples at the club and i was gonna do that on my of especially if i was ali wheezy in the nicest way i can say it you're good you know keep it to yourself i mean i already fucking said yes and the check's already signed yeah so oh damn okay like i can't really back out of this you know so i really tried my best to brace myself yeah um just because like i mean we seem the kind of people that are on there you know why are you laughing <laughs> did you read the word? Well, Nothing. Sorry, he's laughing. Please I'm, continue. He's please laughing continue. at the chat. <laughs> please, 21, please, 22. Please continue. Yeah. How dare you? And yeah. Totally respect it. Um, but I expect a certain level of respect to be given to me. And there were some times in the show, and yeah, they did apologize for it. Listen, did the whatever podcast go a little bit overboard by spawning the Gorlock meme? I would say so. I mean, I wouldn't be too happy either if I decided to go on the podcast and they made memes about me afterward. But let's just be honest, you walked into half of it. I mean, you literally said, I'm a baddie, I'm a 10. Which, you know, girl boss, confidence, whatever you want to call it, that's great. But I mean, at the end of the day, what you're experiencing is delirium. I saw this on Twitter the other day, and it really just shows me how backwards the world is. You know, people on Twitter are saying that Margot Robbie, one of the most beautiful actresses I would say ever, is mid. Now, I'm not trying to like objectify her or say that she's only as good as her looks because that's obviously not true. I've seen her Hot Ones interview. I think she's pretty cool, like just in general. But she's like undeniably, objectively beautiful. But, but by any sort of beauty standard, I think she'd rank like as very attractive. But it's crazy, you know, we live in a world where this is considered mid to some people and this is considered a 10 to some people. Like, like, what's going on? Whatever they want to say, beauty's in the eye of the beholder or whatever, right? But bro, at the end of the day, we gotta kind of get something as like a basis as to what we can have as a beauty standard. Anyways, Wheezy, if you're watching this, I'm still down to do an interview. I will not be paying you anything though, so just keep that in mind. You're gonna get paid in raw exposure, which I know is like the most valueless currency of all time. But if you're interested, just hit me up. I'm reading my DMs and stuff, but yeah. Gorlock the Destroyer is back. Dude, she got iced up. Do you see this? Who iced up her neck? Well, what is of her neck and not her chin? Can you imagine having all this ice and it's just like underneath this? And just the back of your neck, just straight green. <laughs> 80% of the diamonds are being covered by this. Like, that's at least $40,000 of ice being hidden underneath this blubber. Yeah, you're right. You need, like, a double wide chain if you're gonna have a neck like that. This frame is crazy. I can't is... believe I'm looking at this right now. Yeah, it's just sad. Look at the lips. If is that lip if filler? You, if you hit that with a toothpick, you get, like, a go-gurt squirt on your face. <laughs> Tap that with a little toothpick, you're getting that, like, you know, that water fountain treatment. Yeah. Yeah, that was disgusting. My bad. So, Gorlock the Destroyer, a.k.a. the Certified Baddie, a.k.a. Al Weezy, um, a.k.a. the Earth Center, of gravity decided to go on an e-date on the aiden ross stream i think aiden ross pays her at least like like a thousand or two for each stream which is why she keeps coming back really so. you think he pays her dude yeah why would she go on this consensually i guess i mean does the do they have only fans or something uh i don't know what she does dude you I, definitely have that her only fans <laughs> yeah if i had her yeah. only fans i would walk to home depot today and ask them for their sturdiest rope is what i would do okay <laughs> you understand yeah anyway i completed my boy Scars, my dog Scars, man, what up? Shit, boy, it's been a long fucking time. Oh, come on, bro. Just Hitting a the vape. fat vape rip five <laughs> seconds in. That's crazy. Just blowing some fat clouds. Come on now. Do you think they need like a specialized vape for those lips? Or <laughs> is it just like a regular? Dude, that thing has to be modified. Like you got to have some like high voltage mods on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude why would you do like what do you think is gonna get cancer first like do you think she's gonna get like heart cancer or lung cancer um depends on the quantity of vape rips per hour i mean dude this person like it was straight up five seconds on the stream and they ripped they pulled out the vape yeah literally so, six seconds we're gonna have to go with the lung if i had to bet money on it i'd go with the lung yeah all uh, right turn on camera here Ooh, we go my that was God. a fat rip too uh, that was, shit, boy, that it's was been a, a long fucking rip. time dude uh, is that a blinker 
Oh, that was a fat rip. <laughs> Jeez. I turn on Let's look at the here inhale. So he's not competing for you, oh, Ali. He's not competing for you. Oh my God, she chiefed it. She's oh. not exhaling. Oh, he's just here she to ate it? Really, um... She actually ate it. No her, smoke came out. Her lungs converted that into pure liquid. No smoke came out, bro. Help you. Play, wait, hold up. Play that back, bro. <laughs> no smoke came out. He's not competing for you, oh, Ali. He's not competing for you, Ali. He's just here to really um help Jeez. you out, kind of, Ali. <laughs> you know, he's a he's a guru when it comes to basically spitting game. Um, you may have heard him as game is game. That's him. That's his whole thing. So, um, you know, uh, I wanted Scars to just drop some knowledge on the on, on the kids on the chat. Do you think he's domesticating? Like, do you think he's gonna like put this on lock? Like this dude on the right? Yeah. Do you think he's gonna domesticate the baddie? Like tame the beast? Mm. If you get what I'm saying? I don't think he's got it. I don't think he's got it. I think he's gonna get rejected. Honestly. All right, we'll have to see. On everyone, you know, Scar, you know what you usually do, man. Maybe some of your, you know, how to perform some of your your shit. So go ahead and uh, Ally, this is Scar. Scar's Ally. Go ahead. How you doing, Allie? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I need to know. First of all, um, you're single, right? Mm -hmm. Shocking. We can tell. We Shocking. Can tell. <laughs> Shocking. I wonder why. Dude, next she's going to tell us that she's fat. Why do you think that's the problem? Do you think that it's hard for people to find, you know, they find it hard to accept yeah. you? Is that what it is? I wouldn't. What? Yeah. Unless it's like. So, I mean, I'm trans, but don't you bro, bro. come off as rude. I'm not sensitive bro. to it, but I'm saying you can be. Are they um, around? Those people mean? who care, are they around? <laughs> around me right now? Yeah. No, but a lot of my followers are the LGBTQ plus community, so... Okay. It can come off as offensive. Does All this right. person but, um, like actually have followers, or is it like rage bait? Uh, that's a fantastic question. I think she actually has like 40k on Instagram. Bro. No. Yeah, I'm serious. We gotta fact check. There's no way. 40k is a lot. Yeah, 40,000 40 human beings. What is this person's name? Except for Gordon. <laughs> Al Weezy. That is an incredible name. 46k. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. And you, yo, you gotta see these pictures, bro. Oh god. Yeah, these pictures are crazy, bro. What? What the f wait, 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 what is the thousand calorie? Click that. I need to see that. Oh, I can't. I don't have an account. There's no way they did that to us. Dude, what the f Oh, dear. No, these have to be botted followers, bro. No, come on, bro. Oh, me, oh, my. No. Good 46,000? For what? I, I have not a clue. I don't know, man. I'm not buying these numbers, man. 46K is crazy. Yeah, that is uh, absurd. No, it, can, it definitely can play like a huge role into like my whole dating thing for sure. Just because like the DL boys and it's crazy. All right, as a trans, if I was to date a trans and I don't dirt, I don't date trans at all, mm -hmm. you have to do a lot of shit. Like if you want to be a man and a woman, you're going to be cooking my dinner and you're going to be digging the fucking holes outside. Like since you want to play both roles, you better <laughs> Yo, that's insane. be a good clean, a person who can clean the holes. fuck up out the house and you also better be a good mechanic. You better be the one who goddamn go downstairs and check on shit at night, and you better be the one who decorate the goddamn house with flowers. If you want to take on both roles, you got to do both jobs. Do you agree so, with that? The that is a fair response, I feel like, right? From like a utilitarian perspective, I feel like that's the best way to go about it, you know? I think I think so, yeah. I think you're right. I think uh, if you're gonna, yeah. Especially if you're as as uh, physically capable as Ali over here, who's, who's to stop you from digging some holes? Literally. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I think you're getting it confused with something. No. So, as someone who's trans, Bro. there's, I mean, there's like a big ass spectrum of gender two minutes and whatever. We're already getting the speech. But for me, like, I have gender dysphoria. So. Oh, shit. What's that, Jack? I, in my eyes, like, mentally, I don't, I don't think the way that a man does. I don't operate oh, the way that a man does. Okay. When I, before I shower and I see myself in the mirror, I know that what. Before I shower? Come on, like let's let's keep it a box. You know, unfortunately, what's <laughs> under my pants is something that shouldn't be there. Oh, I so she has a like a <laughs> Aiden just discovered that. Come on, this guy's slow. I have like, huh? You don't operate like a man does when you wake up in the morning. Your d don't get hot. Oh my god. Wait, wouldn't the wouldn't the estrogen prevent that or no? Is that that's not a, how that That's works? actually well. That's I think that's what he's asking, right? Oh, okay. So I, we're gonna figure that out right now. Yeah. I mean, shout out to estrogen. Shout out to estrogen? Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, so your d don't work at all? No, my hormones, like, 
not the main medication that I take. Bro, what the? Okay, okay then why you still got it? Who just, you just dangle. You can't get it hard. You can't, you can't, you can't do shit with it. Why do you have it? That's like TMI. I don't want to cross that boundary yet. <laughs> Okay, that's cool. Come on, just let the black king ask his questions. It's like, you're not going to talk down to a black king like this. He has a valid question. He's trying to get educated. This is what they're always saying. Like, educate yourself. Okay, he's literally talking to a primary source and you're shutting him down. It's disrespectful. Like, come on, let him ask his questions. He's being inquisitive. He's being, you know, he has a thirst for knowledge. The indomitable human spirit will never be silenced, Aloisi. Yeah, that's true. I'm sensing some cultural appropriation here. How so? Because he's black and he's asking questions and... Sh She's just rejecting him. Like, she's just, she's not allowing his uh, inquisition to be possible. But if I don't identify or I don't relate with, unfortunately, my body parts and I don't see myself playing a male role in a relationship. Um, but I don't know. That's I lost cool. my chair, but. I'm just telling you, if you ever get with a dude like me, be prepared to be one busy bitch or whatever you want to call yourself. <laughs> Because if you're going to be some of everything, you're going to do everything. Now, that's really all the information I can give you because I don't know what it's like dating a trans. I'm just telling you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely get paid for this. Yeah, I'll definitely get paid for this. Dude, she's sitting there getting lambasted Roasted. right now. Yeah, yeah, okay. She's not doing this for free. You're right. There's just Wait, no okay. What about the whatever podcast where well, they that, paid that's, that? That's what blew her up. So it has to have been that that was like, you know, she probably got paid like a tiny bit, but now she can charge like more, you know, because Aiden Ross's show is much bigger than the whatever podcast. So wait, you think she got paid even back then? Well, I mean, they basically were like, hey, we want to use you for content. I mean, yeah, look at yourself. I mean, there's just no way that she did that for free. I mean, to a certain extent, it must be a character because their bio is literally a uh, certified bad you know, I feel like they're kind of playing into it a little bit. I don't know. She definitely got some money from Aiden for this, for sure. Oh, for sure. I mean, look, look at her neck. She just upgraded that shit. <laughs> well, you know, again, like what you can see of the neck. Yeah. That line. It's like, yeah, because you ain't finna have the strength of a dude. Like, imagine having ice on your neck, but we can't even see the neck. And not do the whole second, shit. The, the back half is gone. <laughs> I've never seen a necklace like that. You ain't finna look like up. a woman and not do woman shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, I see she looks like a woman though, chat. That's right? all I can really give you, Aiden. Uh, you want me to talk to you people or what? Yeah, give one, give one game is game. I actually have a question for you. Let's go for it. What advice would you give me as someone who's like <laughs> as confident as I come off as online and like I play this role like I'm a bad bitch, whatever? I don't know how to approach people, like especially when it comes to like flirting. Like, what would what advice would you give me as someone who's starting out as like? in public oh, yeah. in person you, that's one thing to slide in the pm it's want. one thing what to like date? <laughs> huh? what do you date are you, do you like men do you like women or are you one of those kind of sexual orientations men. that will fuck a mouse men. pad if you practice to it <laughs> say what men? a mouse men. pad is crazy All right. uh whew. well one thing about men is uh our bar is very low so <laughs> um <laughs> Shit, I don't know. You probably have to go on grinder or some shit and take a picture just like you got now. Don't stand too far away from the camera. The closer the better. And go ahead and uh, no. put that shit on grinder. And I guarantee you, you'll get you should get something, I would think. Somebody yeah, especially with the grip. Fun. No. Yeah. No? I'm talking about like dating. On dating? Yeah, like dating in general. Not like trying to fight. That's like dating starts nowadays. This is 2023. We all do online dating. Um you don't look like <laughs> What do you like to do for fun? Honestly, just hang out with my family and chill with my friends. Um, well, you either gonna have to fuck your friends and fuck your family. Outside of that, you gonna have to get outside your circle. But then gonna Yo, be the only options you have because that's the only places you're going. Okay, it's very much out of the comfort zone. Bro, push myself what? out of there. There's one guy in my chat who keeps typing, hear me out. Brother, if that's the case, I'm deaf, okay? I never want to hear anything ever again if I'm going to hear you out on this, okay? What is there even to say? H how are we to hear you out in this certain scenario? Like, what do you have to say? So if you were on Grindr, you wouldn't you wouldn't do it? You wouldn't swipe right? Hypothetically. Are you f***ing kidding me? But no, no, if, like, if the photo wasn't too far back, like he I'd said, like a good angle. Dude, no. Bigot. <laughs> I mean, one of us is big, but yeah, it's not <laughs>
but dude how would you ever be saying hear me out to this <gasps> yeah yeah i i mean to be fair aiden aiden sniffed andrew tate's chair and this is his stream so i mean it might be a lot of low standards going around around going on around there right but they're saying like hear me out like let's let's try to do it with this person yeah i think do you think this person could get laid on grinder if they made an account i think uh, they could with enough effort and if they bought like the premium yeah you have to get like the premium plus you'd have to use like a f <laughs> feminizing face filter you'd have to have like a visible designer t-shirt on or something i i don't even know you'd have to literally like max out all of your stats and then get premium and then live in a very gay area so like san francisco you'd have to calculate so many factors you know you'd, like, you literally have to be the gayest person on planet earth you know um yeah yeah you're probably right so yeah it would be san francisco if anything yeah that's what but I'm this saying. person probably lives in like in ohio though. do you hear an accent where do, where do you think this person is from i don't know probably okay, um, where should get there. drunk hell go out and drink you drink <laughs> Yeah, dude, she'd have to Cardi B someone. Yeah, that would, yeah, that could work. Bill Cosby somebody. And then go on Grinder. And then do all this other <laughs> stuff, yeah. <laughs> and, and then, then move to San Francisco. Hey, right, well, shit, go to the bar, get f***ed up, start. That way you don't feel... Uh, uh, mm, uh. Uh, is there a trans bar? Yeah, there's gay mm. bars, right, Chad? Have y'all ever been to one? Not where I'm... There's like a gay club. Yeah, have y'all ever been to one? Uh, okay. <laughs> Aiden Ross is so stupid. Gay bar. Get my f food. Ah. Uh, Aiden, give me two seconds. I got chicken paws on the grill. Yeah, 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 that's cool. Yeah, nah, so Ali, um, he, uh, he is like a, uh, a guru. Like, he's very known for, like, giving advice. Like, he's very good with, like, relationship advice. This guy, like, you could ask him anything, anything you want. He's super, like, um, in tune with, like, everyone's type of, like, orientation and stuff. And he's, he's really, like, he could really help, um, in general with everyone. He gives amazing advice. I think everyone should follow this guy's advice, for real. Great guy mm -hmm. game is wait. game chat hey game is game let Speaking me see of game, wait can i see your aiden, food i need to ask you a question can oh. i ask you something yes anything brother aiden how old is too young to f a girl depends how old you are 30. if you're 30 years old you shouldn't f anything under 24 in my opinion in my opinion under 24. yeah what are your thoughts on that? Okay. See, that's fair, honestly. I mean, that's not very unreasonable. Keem Star might be devastated to hear that, but... Yeah, Keem is shaking right now. Um, I think that's fair. 24? I mean, but he also said... Uh, did he say f*** or date? Well, I think it doesn't matter. It's just, I mean, if you're dating, you're f***. 24? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's fair. Whoa! Nah, someone in my chat typed, if there's a hole, there's a goal. Not with this on screen, <laughs> bro. Come on. There's the goal, a hole, survive and escape. That's the goal. Like, run. That's the goal. Retreat. Find safety. Go to a f***ing barracks nearby, you know? Hide underneath something. Hide in the vegetable aisle or something. Bro, this video is almost over. All right, let's start. Let's Some start. of these guys definitely have riz. How many of these guys do you think would, we uh... We have business out there and stuff. Would do um, it. Look, All of them. I'm not gonna I lie. I, I heard, uh, like, I know you're, you're very, what into, the you know, you said, I, I gotta earn an invite to the Carenzada. So I mm -hmm. want you to know, if there's ever a chance, you know, we can link up. You're in Arizona, I'm in California. We can go for, a, we can go on a date. Aww, um, that would be like sushi. I love Marky. Sushi. So look, I'm gonna plan this out. I know you like wine. We go to a little winery, right? Do some wine tasting. Mm -hmm. Then right across the street from the winery in LA, there's like a sushi. They're, they come on this little conveyor belt. We just eat some sushi. You know, this guy wrote a book for a date invite you know what i mean good shit okay Where marky down in the fucking park all right marky. <laughs> yeah hey that's all i'm saying all right marky thank you all right uh what do you rate marky one through ten he was like a seven he was cool Okay, 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 okay. Dude, how, th she has so much, like, cellulite that her eyes, like, they can't fully open. Like, that would cause too much muscle strain. All right, let me get this next. Oh, more, <laughs> hit the vape. Next person in here. Little vape break. Uh, this is gonna uh, be a phone. fat rep? That's a fat rep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're done. Yo, 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 what's up, yo? Do you want him off, Allie? <laughs> Is he done? Next no, 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 no. This guy would do it for sure. I was looking in the mirror. Yo! Wait, why did she kick him? <laughs> <laughs> in his defense, I don't know if he was talking about you or not. Bro, what an idiot. Don't All right. Uh, uh, talk your shit, Allie. Purr, sis. Oh, God. I, I can't watch this anymore.
Just like Santa Claus and just like the Tooth Fairy, this video is gonna have a lot of non-believers. So if you're not ready to believe, then I don't know what to tell you, big guy. Go watch someone else. Go watch Dream. But everything I'm about to tell you is absolutely true and took place on October 6th, 2023. On October 6th, 2023, I met Gorlock the Destroyer, aka the Certified Baddie, aka Al Weezy. Not joking, completely true. I'll just run you through what happened, right? So I'm at the airport, I'm not gonna say which one, and I'm at security. You know, they gotta check, you know, they don't know if I'm clean, right? They gotta see if I have any, uh, last chance to look at me, Hector. Beep, 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 you know what I mean? So, so, you know, I handed my ID, I scanned my boarding pass, and I got online for security. Now, the airport was kind of busy, which is like, I don't, are people traveling right now? It's like the middle of October. Is this a hot season for traveling? So, because it's busy, there's like a few different lines for security. I'm on one line. There's about maybe 10 other lines to streamline the whole process. Now, me having nothing to do, I'm just looking around at the, you know, people at the airport. Dude, I won't lie, it's fun to just sometimes watch the people, you know? Sometimes you just see a character at the airport. Dude, I saw a guy last year at the airport who had an LGBT rainbow eye patch. He had the pride patch, you know what I mean? That wasn't funny, but dude, like, why why did he have that? It's one of my guilty pleasures, and I'm also a tall guy, so I just get a pretty good view of the general crop of people that are around me. So, you know, I'm looking around, and I swear to God, I literally look to my left, and about three lines down, I see Gorlock. But I didn't, it didn't register instantly. It was one of those, like, shock moments. So I see her look down at my phone because it didn't register, and then I do a double take. My head snaps back looking at her. I thought I was hallucinating for a second. Dude, the Uber driver who took me to the airport gave me free gum, so I was thinking for a second, like, did this guy put something in this gum? Am I about to not only take a trip, but also take a trip? But no, I see her, and I know what you're thinking. You might be thinking, like, why didn't you take a picture of her? Why didn't you go up to her and ask for a picture? I didn't want a picture, to be honest. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, no thanks. And I also didn't want to take a picture of her from the distance for two reasons, right? Number one, I didn't want her to see me. That's just weird. Like, if I'm taking a picture and she turns around and she sees me, like, what the hell is that interaction? bro. That's so weird. That's just, ugh, no thanks. And number two is if one of the security guys saw me taking a picture of her, they might think that I have a target, and I don't want them to think that I'm trying to, you know, hurt anybody. Like, I got a flight to catch, man. I don't want to get red flagged by somebody. So I put my phone in my pocket, and I lock in. I instantly start brainstorming what I can do here. What should I do? There's a lot of things that could happen right now. What, what's the route? Do I just ignore her, and if something happens, you know, address that as it happens? Do I pass security and wait there for her to come out? and then ask her to like, I don't know, like add me on Discord for an interview? Nah. But I ended up deciding that we both have our own places to go and that I don't need to approach her for anything. So I just left it alone and I got through security. I walked to my gate, got myself some chips, sat down, and instantly I posted this on Instagram because, you know, I had to let y'all know. Swear on everything I love, I just saw Al Weezy at the airport. And I meant it, bro. I really did see Al Weezy at the airport and I put that on everything, bro. Now, luckily, I do have some proof that I actually met her and it's not like the best proof ever but as you can see I posted this on my Instagram story six hours from when I took this screenshot like six hours ago and then Al Weezy posted on her story her in a plane now does that prove that we were in the same airport no does it prove that you know I met her at all no but you know just work with me here and you can see she posted that four hours ago so my thing claiming that I met her was posted before she even told anyone she was at the airport or on the plane now I'll just say when I saw her I was surprised that she looked the exact same same as she did in like the podcasts and stuff. This is what she looks like on video and also in person. So it was pretty easy to identify her. Yo, so I just looked up her name on YouTube to see if there was any new content so I could see where she went, obviously, because she was on the plane. And it looks like she was streaming with Aiden Ross in real life. And I found this clip called Gortlock the Destroyer Falls on Aiden Ross Stream. I think she wants to do this one. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> Alright, let's help her out. <laughs> timer, timer, no, timer, three minutes. I mean, honesty is the best policy or, or something. I don't know. I mean, that was like an authentic moment caught on camera, and I gotta respect Gorlock for putting herself in the vulnerable position to allow that to even happen. Because you have to know going into it, when you're doing an IRL stream with Aiden Ross and Neon, and you're Gorlock the Destroyer, like, that's what you're known as, dude. There's gonna be some antagonism. They're gonna try to, like, I don't know, start poking her in front of the camera, taking a Happy Meal box and jiggling that above her. So, you know, she cool for that, going into the lion's 
Caitlyn's den like that. Um, I mean, she's definitely getting paid off like crazy. I mean, Aiden Ross definitely paid for her flight, paid for the plane insurance, paid for, you know, everything else. You know, paid her to stream with him. I mean, she's not, you know, just streaming with him for free. So I guess, you know, maybe it's not that big of a deal for her because she's getting so much money. But still, you know, people have standards, you know, not, not anyone would be willing to get embarrassed for money and she's down, which is cool. And that's not even the only clip to come out of this interaction. There's this too. <laughs> Like Shaggy, you somehow look skinny here, bro. What the? Marky, yeah, Marky. Oh my God, man! Marky, chill, chill. <laughs> Marky almost broke the stairs. <laughs> Like, come on, she didn't almost break the stairs, bro. Like, you're just making stuff up at this point. Gorlock, like, the destroyer almost shattered the tectonic plates. Like, dude, like, bro, at that point, settle down, why don't you? Now, anyway, to circle back to the initial airport sighting. Now, like I said, I didn't approach her to ask for a picture or anything. And if I wanted to, I wouldn't actually have done that because I believe that boundaries are important. Now, that being said, I did see her taking pictures with some other people, but I also feel like, you know, she probably gets bombarded with that all the time. And, you know, I, I look, man, she's just trying to try travel, do her thing, live her life, and I'm not gonna, you know, impede on that too much. I'm gonna respect her boundaries and just let her be. Especially at an airport, I can't imagine how many middle schoolers run up to her and say, Gorlock, yo, I saw you on the W. Aiden Ross stream. You know, and it's just like, what do you do at that point? You know, like, you have to gain some sort of, like, clinical depression after that happens enough times. And I know that that's part of the give and take of being an influencer. You get one of the easiest jobs on planet Earth, but in return, you are gonna have to deal with people, like, approaching you and asking for pictures. And, and I get that for sure, but it has to reach a boiling point for some people. And I am sympathetic to her, right? Like, she may say some crazy things on podcasts, and, you know, she's very clippable. She's a bit of a lol cow. At the end of the day, just, you know, being cringe on a podcast doesn't mean that you should get, like, you know, whatever, ran up to in real life. And having to deal with unnecessary confrontation, you know, I'm drawing a lot of parallels to Jellybean, actually, because Jellybean basically underwent, like, doxing and stuff like that, all because she was cringe. And Jellybean obviously had it worse than, you know, Ali Weezy is having it, but I'm just saying, like, after seeing Ali Weezy in public, I definitely could see a situation where it's like, okay, she's sitting alone at a Dunkin' Donuts, or like a Chipotle, right? And then, you know, post-practice lacrosse team, they roll into the Chipotle, and then the whole team basically takes turns making the most vile string of words, talking about Ali Weezy humanly possible, like Xbox 360 party style, and then she overhears, like, the worst one and gets really upset, completely loses any interest in finishing her burrito bowl, and it's just like, like, you know, not that this would ever happen, and yes, I did just literally invent a complete fantasy scenario to say don't do this, but, you know, that, that would suck.